One of the biggest challenges in bass fishing is figuring out where to fish on any given day. Every time we go fishing, we're trying to predict where bass are living based on a ton of different factors, like the weather, water temperature, the time of year, and what types of cover and structure are available on our body of water. One of the most important factors is the time of year. Fishermen normally break up a fishing year into the spring, summer, fall, and winter. Then they further divide these seasons into one to two month windows. In each of these windows, bass will reposition on different types of structures and in different depths of water in the areas that they're living in. I plan on making a video on all of these windows, but in this video, I'm just going to focus on the pre-spawn period. To understand what the pre-spawn is, we need to get inside the mind of a bass and see what motivates their spring movements. In the spring, bass are mainly focused on spawning or laying their eggs in shallow water. All of their movements are focused on either preparing for the spawn, laying their eggs, or protecting their eggs as they hatch. So with this in mind, let's see how this plays out on a typical lake. Leading up to the pre-spawn, we have the late winter period. I normally think bass are still in their late winter patterns when water temperatures are between 45 and 50 degrees. During this time, bass are still living in or near the deepest water in their area because the water temperatures are cold and they're focused on feeding up for the spawn later in the year. Bass typically don't leave these deeper areas until water temperatures creep above the 50 degree mark. But then, as water temperatures warm up, bass will start moving towards their spawning areas. Spawning areas are usually flat, shallow parts of the lake in less than 5 feet of water. These areas are often found in the backs of creeks and bays or around large islands. There are obviously exceptions to this rule, and I've caught spawning bass as deep as 10 feet of water and out on the main lake, but let's just use this shallow water area for this example. I'll be making a full video on the spawn soon, and I'll go into more detail in that video. So again, once water temperatures get above 50 degrees, bass will make their way towards these spawning areas, and will usually start making their beds when water temperatures get above 60 degrees. And so pre-spawn is a time period when water temperatures are between 50 and 60 degrees, and the bass are moving from their late winter areas to their spawning areas. Again, there are exceptions to this water temperature guideline, and the exact timing of the pre-spawn period can vary depending on the part of the country you're in and the species of bass you're targeting. Okay, so now we know what the pre-spawn period is, but where do fish actually live during this period? Well, in general terms, bass will stop at the most obvious pieces of structure and cover between their main lake areas and their spawning areas. So in this example, from one of my favorite pre-spawn areas on Lake Maumelle in Arkansas, Bass will start in their winter areas, like this main lake ridge that drops off into the main river channel. Once the water gets around 50 degrees, they'll start moving towards this spawning pocket and stop on either this main lake point or this submerged road that was here before the lake was flooded. Then as water temperatures reach 52 to 55 degrees, they'll start setting up on these rocky secondary points. And finally, as water temperatures reach 60 degrees, They'll work their way all the way back into these spawning areas. The fish like to spawn in this bay in particular because it's mostly protected from the cold north wind. So as you can see, the main lake point, the roadbed, and the secondary point served as staging areas for these bass. You'll often hear people talking about staging areas and that bass are staging on the spot. Staging areas are places bass can feed up before the spawn, and they're normally areas like points, ledges, and drains that are just outside the spawning areas that bass can use to ambush bait and crawfish. And if we look at a Navionics topographic map of this spot, you can get a better idea of what the bottom contours in this area look like. Here's the main lake ridge and the creek channel the bass use in the winter. Here's that main lake point connected to the ridge and that roadbed. And here are those secondary points. I really like these points because they have deep water right off the tip of each point. This allows the bass to pull up shallow and feed when the weather is nice and sunny, but also allows them to pull off into deep water when there's a cold front. And finally, here's the spawning area, and as you can see, the water is really shallow in the back of this bay. Perfect for spawning. 
Hopefully that illustrated how bass behave in the pre-spawn, but unfortunately, not all lakes look like Lake Maumelle, and pre-spawn bass will stage on different structure and cover, depending on the type of lake you're fishing. So what I want to do now is show you examples of staging areas from some different types of lakes, so you can hopefully relate what I'm talking about in this video to your home lake. So first up, let's look at a deep, clear lake, like Lake Washita in central Arkansas. Here's one of my favorite areas to fish in the pre-spawn on Lake Washita using Navionics, and if we zoom in here, you can see that there's a lot of nice points and pockets that these fish can stage on and spawn in. And so what will happen is these fish will sit out here on the main lake, out here off these points and on this bluff wall. And then as the water temperatures warm up to the 50 degree range, they'll start staging on the tip of these points. And there's actually some brush piles off the end of these points here. And they'll sit out in 20 to 30 feet of water. And I like to catch them on an umbrella rig and a three quarter ounce football jig, fishing down there pretty deep off the end of these points. And then as water temperatures creep up into the 55 degree range, these bass will pull up out of that deep water onto some of these secondary points or the points off these islands. And they'll sit in anywhere from 8 to 15 feet of water and they'll catch a lot of fish on suspended jerk baits off these points. And then finally as that water temperature creeps up into the 60 degree range, they'll leave those points and they'll move back into these pockets to start spawning. Next up, let's take a look at a shallow dirty water lake like Lake Chico in southern Arkansas. Lake Chico's maximum water visibility is maybe two feet deep, and the fish normally don't get any deeper than 10 feet of water. And there's a lot of cypress trees in Lake Chico, and cypress trees are one of my favorite types of cover to fish in the pre-spawn. And here's one of my favorite areas on Chico, and what'll happen in the late winter is these fish will actually be sitting out in front of these cypress trees. And then as water temperatures get into the 50 degree range, they'll start moving up on the outside edge of these cypress trees on the deeper trees that are in four to six feet of water. Then as water temperatures get into the 55 degree range, they'll start moving further back into these trees and start staging on trees in three to five feet of water. Finally, as the water temperatures get into the 60 degree range, they'll move to the shallowest trees that are in a foot or two of water and spawn on the base of these cypress trees. And one of my favorite ways to fish these trees in the pre-spawn is actually fishing a square bill crankbait down the side of these trees. And I also like pitching a jig or a tube right on the base of these trees as well. And another great type of cover on shallow, dirty water lakes in the pre-spawn is riprap and riprap or chunk rock banks are always going to hold fish in the pre-spawn and I like to fish these areas with a flat side crankbait or a square bill and I'll even throw an Alabama rig and a jerkbait down these banks as well if the water clarity is between a foot and a half to two foot of visibility. Next up are river systems and for this example I'm going to be showing you guys a spot that Tom Monsoor used to win the 2017 FLW Tour event on the Potomac River. And all it is is a spawning flat off the main river on the Potomac. And as you can see, there's some nice ditches that wind into this spawning flat. And they're basically just old creek channels. And this is actually an image taken when the Potomac was on low tide. So if we bring the river back up, you can see that there's some nice grass that's spread out on the spawning flat. And what will happen is these fish will sit out on the main river in the late winter. And then as water temperatures get up into the 50 degree range, They'll move to the mouths of these ditches right on the edge of this flat. Then as water temperatures get into the 55 degree range, they'll follow these ditches back onto the spawning flat and kind of sit in the middle of the ditches. Then as water temperatures get into the 60 degree range, they'll move up out of the ditches onto the spawning flat and they'll make their beds in the holes in this grass. And then as far as how I would fish this spot, I would actually fish it with a rattle trap or a chatterbait. And I would put my boat right in the center of that ditch, and I would try to cast on the edge of the ditches, letting my chatterbait and my rattle trap get caught up in the grass, and then I'd rip it free. And this is a great way to catch a limit of bass really quick in the pre-spawn. And here's another example of a great pre-spawn area on a river system, and this is actually a spawning flat on Lake Dardanelle. And it's called Lake Dardanelle, but it's actually part of the Arkansas River System, so it sets up a lot more like a river than a lake. But all it is is a spawning flat on the backside of this island, and it's protected from the main river. And in the summertime, there's normally a lot of lily pads on this flat here. But in the winter, those lily pads will die, and all that's left are lily pad stems. 
but the base of those lily pad stems create a hard bottom area that these bass like to spawn in. And so what these fish will do is they'll pull up out of the main river onto the edge of this flat when water temperatures get into the 50 degree range, and they'll sit on the edge of these lily pad stems in five to six feet of water. And then as water temperatures get into the 50 to 5 degree range, they'll move up onto this flat and get in the lily pad stems. And you can catch them on uh, chatter baits and spinner baits really well. And then as the water temperatures get into the 60 degree range, they'll either spawn right up against this island or actually out in these lily pad stems in 1 to 2 feet of water. And this has always been a great area that produces a lot of 20 pound bags on Lake Dardanelle. And finally, let's take a look at natural lakes. Natural lakes are pretty much like big bowls, they don't have a lot of contour lines to them, and a good example is like Harris on the Harris chain of lakes in Florida. And this spot right here is actually the exact spot that Chris Johnston used to win the 2018 FLW Tour event on the Harris chain of lakes just a few weeks ago. And during that tournament the fish were in a pre-spawn mood, they hadn't moved up to the bank yet to spawn. And this spot was really good because it was an offshore flat that was in about 15 feet of water. And there was a lot of hydrilla on this flat that was about 10 feet tall. And this spot in particular was good because unlike the rest of Lake Harris that doesn't have a lot of contour lines or depth changes to it, there was actually a nice hole in the middle of this flat right here. And this created a depression in that hydrilla. And the bait fish kind of congregated in that depression, and Chris was catching a bunch of big bass throwing a jerk bait and a rattle trap and targeting those fish that were feeding on the shad. And that's kind of a good tip on any natural lake around the country. If you're looking for pre-spawn bass, look for flats offshore that have slight contour line changes. Even if it's a two to three foot change, that can be huge on a natural lake and it can congregate a lot of big bass. So guys, that's pretty much it for my brief explanation of pre-spawn bass fishing. There are a lot more techniques and places that bass get in the pre-spawn, but I just couldn't cover them all in this video. But if you want more content about pre-spawn bass fishing, check out my channel in the next couple of weeks here. I'll be posting a lot of videos on pre-spawn bass fishing on a bunch of different lakes, and I'll actually be out on the water fishing rather than just uh, showing you graphics on my computer. So again, if you enjoyed this video, uh, hit like and subscribe down below, and also share it with a friend who might learn something from this video. And also, if you really liked all of the maps and the illustrations in this video, check out my Fish the Moment live streams. I do them every other week, and I break down subscribers' lakes using Navionics and Google Earth. And if you like this video, you're gonna love those. I go really in depth about areas and contour lines and all that kind of stuff. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.